Yo, 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 my name is Petrowski, and today I wanted to come at you guys with a quick video explaining shiny hunting in Pokemon Mo. And I kind of wanted to cover every aspect I possibly could. So, sweet scent, healing, teleport, shiny charm, donator status, etc., etc. I want to teach you guys how to shiny hunt, where to shiny hunt, what to shiny hunt, and how to do it somewhat efficiently and also still have fun, etc., uh, etc. Et so, hopefully, we'll see you guys with all that. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Okay, first things first, let's cover the absolute basics, what Pokemon you need. So I believe that there are four Pokemon that absolutely everyone needs to shiny hunt. And in my opinion, that number one thing is a Utility Smeargle or a Breloom. Something that can Spore and False Swipe and catch that shiny Pokemon properly, safely, and not risk any sort of, you know, issue with catching it. Make it very easy to catch, eliminate some issues with that. The second thing being a Sweet Center that has Sweet Scent PP maxed. So with Sweet Scent and Pokemon, Pokemon Mo, if you click Sweet Scent while well, having it, I have it Keybind for example. Keybinds are also a very important part of uh, Shiny Hunting, which I will explain in this video. Um, the two Keybinds that I use are Sweet Scent and Teleport, and I'll get into Teleport in a split second. So whenever you click Sweet Scent over a Pokemon encounter spot in Pokemon Mo, you have a you will 100% chance encounter a horde. And what encountering hordes does is obviously encounter five times more Pokemon than just a single encounter, so it's much faster, much, much, much faster, five times faster to horde encounter and sweet scent to shiny hunt than single encounters. So definitely, 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 if possible, for whatever Pokemon you're shiny hunting, please use hordes. They're very, very good. Um, very, very important core fundamental part of Pokemon Mo shiny hunting. So a Smeargle that can help you catch a Pokemon, a Sweet Center that has Sweet Scent PP maxed. When you PP max Sweet Scent, it'll, you'll be able to Sweet Scent six times, so that's 30 Pokemon encounters per time before you need to like heal or use Lepa Berries, etc, etc. Uh, and the next two Pokemon you need are an HM Slave. This is kind of optional, but I think it's Pretty required an HM slave because usually you have to surf or strength or cut or fly or you know have something like that to get around the map. I always keep this on me basically whenever. Um, HM slaves are very important to the Pokemon journey. And then a teleporter. So this is actually a competitive Pokemon that I use, but the only important thing is having a Pokemon that has teleport. So for example, when you use all of your sweet scents in this spot, I will now click four, which is my hotkey for teleport, and it'll teleport me right in front of the PC. You can just immediately spam your A button, as opposed to flying. So let's say if I were to example, if I were here and I were to do this, and I were to fly back, which is already two more keys, it puts me here, and then I have to run in and heal my Pokemon that way. So it actually saves a, a lot of time over the long run. Obviously, it seems like very little time there, but when you're constantly going back and forth to the PC to heal um, on those kind of shiny hunts, it saves so much time to have a teleport Pokemon. So very important, very underrated, something that has kind of only become more known recently-ish. The next thing I want to cover quickly is Lepa Berries. So Lepa Berries are an item that heal the PP of any move by 10. They cost around 1k each on the GTL. And people, there are certain shiny Pokemon or certain shiny farms or hunts that kind of require Lepa Berries because they're so far away from a PC to heal. You can still do those hunts by going to the PC to heal. I've definitely done some hunts like that. Um, for example, Stunfisk is like pretty close to a PC, but you can arguably Lep Lepa it. Um, or like Vanillite, that's something that I've uh, healed from the PC yet instead of using Lepa Berries. But you definitely can use Lepa Berries on certain hunts. Uh, I think Magmar was a huge one back in the day. I don't know if that's still a good spot, but... The, or Ditto. Ditto is a great example. Ditto on the bottom floor of Pokemon Mansion is a common horde spot to get Shiny Ditto, as opposed to just single encountering him. So, yeah, as you can see here. So people... Like, the very bottom floor. So it'd be such a pain to, like... You can't dig out of Pokemon Mansion, so you'd have to, like, run all the way out and go to the Pokemon Center and heal and then run all the way back down. It'd be, and, like, do all, like, the, the teleports and click all the statues. It'd be a huge pain. Huge, huge, huge pain. So, Lepa Berries are definitely sort of a requirement for a grind like that, and they're a very core part of shiny hunting in Pokemon Mo. Okay, the next thing to cover is Donator Status Ticket. So, this is an item that you can buy off of the their little like gift shop in game which you can use for real life money so bit of a pay to win aspect but still such like a small increase that it's 
pretty, you know, okay for the game. Um, it helps the developers make money for a beautiful game, so they rightfully deserve it. But anyways, Generator Status Ticket, 7 days, costs around 1.2 mil on the GTL, and it gives you a 10% chance of encountering Shinies, and 10% faster egg hatching, and 25% more XP in battles. And then the 15 day costs around 2 mil, so it's a little, obviously it ends up being better to buy the longer ones usually, the 30 day being around 3.4 mil. There's a little bit of value saved when you buy the larger ones, but um, overall, donator status is an interesting one. Donator status, in my opinion, can be worth it. Um, donator status is one of those things that if you play a lot, if you shiny hunt a lot, if you can do like, I want to say six, like four to six hours a day, or at least like probably four to six. If you do like four hours a day of shiny hunting, it's probably worth it. Um, which is which is a lot for some and not many for some. It depends. Uh, definitely, it super depends. But donor status is definitely can be decently worth it if you play a lot. Is the basic synopsis. And then shiny charm is a ton different though. Shiny charm is a more interesting case. I'll touch on that just right now. So shiny charm is an item only gotten through, I believe. Holiday item rewards, so things like the lucky red envelope has a chance to drop these, and these always go up in price post the event. So these were peaking at around 295k a couple months ago when the event was live, and they're slowly grinding up in price. So these are honestly a decent investment. Um, usually holiday items are always pretty good investments, but depends. You know, I don't know tell anyone to make risks, but shiny charm increases the chance for a shiny encounter by 10 percent for one hour and it cost 325k at the current time of recording but with a shiny charm you can also invite three other people into a link and those link members will receive a five percent bonus to a shiny chance so you kind of get more of a group bonus more of a group uh gain shiny charm is from my experience i've bought in a lot of shiny charms i've been in a lot of shiny charms they're not financially worth it. Shiny charms are never, in my in my opinion, never financially worth it. They are, however, fun. They're very fun. They're a very cute and fun, cool group activity. If you're trying to bond with your team, if you're trying to shiny hunt with friends, they're a fun thing. They're, they're a very fun activity to gather people together, make you play more efficiently, make it feel like you don't want to waste, you know, you don't want to waste that one hour you have of precious shiny charms, so... They're a fun breakaway and a fun thing to loosen up shiny hunting. Okay, next thing, let's talk about what to shiny hunt. And honestly, this question is just best answered by yourself. Um, I definitely recommend just shiny hunting, whatever you enjoy. Shiny hunting for profit isn't really a good thing. It's just better. Uh, there's just other better methods like shiny hunting for profit would be super slow, super sporadic, and just not good money overall. Um, but... I recommend shiny hunting for what you want. So, for example, let's say I want to shiny hunt for a shiny Maril, which is kind of what I'm doing right now, but not really at the same time. So, you would go to the wild locations under the Maril Pokedex and look for any hordes. So, there's quite a lot of horde options for Mar Maril. So, this is kind of a confusing one. So, for example, there's one here like only at night. You can hoard here on Route 120. You can hoard here on Route 111, and you want to go through these and kind of go test and see which one is either fastest to a Poke Center or fastest in some other way, like whatever is efficient, right? So probably fastest to a Poke Center is the only thing you check. So for example, I'm right now I'm currently hunting Shiny Surskit and or Shiny Maru, but I definitely prefer Surskit, and it's kind of why I'm here because there are 100% Maru spots, but this spot is 50% Marl, 50% Surskit. So you can see if I press Sweet Scent here, here's the first encounter. This is a Surskit horde. And basically what all I do here is I press three over and over and over again until I'm out of Sweet Scent and then press four, teleport back, heal, and then run right back. So <clears throat> it's important to test every spot manually. So whenever I wanted to, it took me a while to find this spot for Surskit and there was actually a period of time where I hunted in a different spot for circuit. So I actually hunted over here, north of Malville City, I believe, for a while. What I would do is I would, you know, fly here, run up here, surf to this spot, and I would sweet send at this spot. And then after doing a bit of testing here, as you can see, there's there's circuit here as well. There's circuit and marl here, similar to the other spot, but 
this spot is just simply slightly further from the PC. So I might as well hunt down here. So it's important to go through the Pokedex, go through each hold spot, and just test for yourself, figure out where you want to hunt your favorite Pokemon and what Pokemon you want to hunt for. Okay, something else that I wanted to touch on really quickly is how to stay safe while shiny hunting and not lose shinies. So what I mean by this is certain Pokemon have certain moves or abilities that will make you lose that Pokemon or make it very difficult to catch them in a horde if you're trying to shiny hunt them. So for example, Ralts can be hoarded and is a wild Pokemon, a very common you know, shiny hunt. People love Ralts, people love Gardevoir. But this Pokemon can have, or often have, or may always have, I'm not sure, have Teleport in the wilderness. So if a wild Ralts uses Teleport against you, it will just teleport away and, and stop the battle. It will take you out of the encounter. So imagine losing a shiny like that, right? Like that would be heartbreaking. So a good way to counter this is to have a Gardevoir leading in the front of your party um, while hunting shiny Ralts. And what you're going to do is you're going to click, you're going to have teleport on your Gardevoir and the move imprison. And what imprison does is it prevents the opponent from using any moves that you have. So it prevent the wild Ralts from having, from being able to use teleport as long as you have teleport and click imprison on your own Gardevoir. Another super classic example are things like Graveler, things like Electrode, anything that can have explosion or self-destruct. That's kind of a classic in like the shiny hunting scene is Pokemon exploding on you when trying to shiny hunt for them. And that's why it is really important to have a damp Pokemon. So I have this uh, Quagsire in my boxes stuffed away if I ever want to do that. So having a damp Pokemon to prevent a shiny from exploding on you can be a very nice tool to have in your toolbox as well. And then another example could be any sort of Pokemon with something that can kill, a move that can kill itself. So for example, you might have seen my shiny Hoppip live encounter video. And in that video, I didn't realize that at that level, because I hadn't been hunting Shiny Hopip at that high of a level for so long, um, they can learn things like Memento or Rage Powder. And in a horse, so Rage Powder is a move that makes it so you have to focus that Pokemon that's using Rage Powder. So in a horde, if I go to like kill the other Pokemon, if the Shiny Hopip were to have Rage Powder and use Rage Powder, I would have just paydayed and killed the Shiny Hop on accident, which would have been... A tragedy right and memento is another move that instantly faints the user to lower your the enemy stats so things like that are super scary so shiny hop up is a super scary hunt at least at high levels around like 50 etc um so having a taunt pokemon super super crucial i try to keep a taunt pokemon on me at all times um whenever i'm shiny hunting like i i didn't know that hop up could have those moves honestly and I almost lost the shiny, but thankfully I did have a taunt Pokemon in my party by some act of God, like at the time. Also, thankfully my Hopup didn't have those moves. It was the lowest level Hopup in the uh, in the horde, so got lucky in a lot of ways. But a taunt Pokemon is another super important tool to have on you. And last but not least, to, at least to my knowledge, there could be a bunch that I'm forgetting, but it can be really important to have a ghost type, any sort, any sort of ghost type Pokemon on you while shiny hunting, because certain Pokemon know moves like Take Down, which are a normal type move that do re recoil damage, but it won't hit a ghost type; it'll just totally miss, so it won't actually take any recoil damage. So having a ghost type can be super important for any sort of hunt like that. I think Ponyta is a good example of a Pokemon that can learn Take Down, which is a beloved shiny that people love to hunt, um, but. It is really only important to have these Pokemon, these kind of like specific niche saving Pokemon on you when you're hunting that specific Pokemon because obviously you can't have all of these Pokemon on you at all times. You can only have six Pokemon in your party at a time, so it's just not realistic to be expected to have all of these on you. But it is important to do a little research and understand what moves your Pokemon is going to have, and you can kind of check that by checking the Pokedex or checking the GTL and like look at Pokemon around that level for the species that you're hunting and see if they have any moves that could be an issue. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, and best of luck. Hope you guys don't lose any shinies. That stuff is works of nightmares. Another important thing to bring up, or important method rather, of shiny hunting is egg hatching. 
and this is basically when you bought mass buy or mass catch a ton of Pokemon and just breed them over and over and over again to try to get that shiny. This method is only really used for rares, such as Pokemon like Shuckle, which can only be either bred as a shiny or caught in the Safari Zone, which is obviously very risky and very rare and scary. It's actually faster to breed and more safe and secure and everything like that to breed a shiny Shuckle than to catch one in the Safari Zone, or you could just get lucky like me. But anyways, there are certain Pokemon you want to do this for. Things like Starters, things like Charmander, Torchic, Snivy, any sort of starter... Um, things like, I think Riolu is a good example. I think Riolu can be bred once you evolve it into a Lucario. Things like that. These are Pokemon that are easier to breed for a shiny rather than to catch them. Um, so that's important to know and think about and understand. If you really want to hunt a rare, it can be a very long, multi-year long journey. When I was hunting and planning to breed for my shiny Shuckle, I was planning it to be for like a two-year long journey, like passively in the background. So... It's something serious to undertake and something that only the most, you know, the biggest Pokemon masters will even dare to attempt. Also, an important thing to note when breeding for a shiny is that whether it's shiny or not is determined on egg creation. And basically what that means is this is the perfect time to use donator stat status on top of shiny charm. So when you're breeding for a shiny... It can be really good to stock up all your boxes, get a ton of Pokemon. So here's a good example. I have a ton of Dittos or Shittos, quote unquote, stocked up. And these are basically Dittos that have no good IVs. They're pretty useless, so they're just Shittos. Um, and what you'll do is you'll buy half a box of Shittos, half a box of whatever Pokemon you're going to breed. So for example, Shuckle. And you'll go ahead and get these Pokemon into your party so one sec i'm gonna go ahead and buy some off the gtl to show you guys more properly one sec i can also just go ahead and show you guys how to buy them so i'm gonna go ahead and buy two shittos and two shuckles just searching for the lowest price off the gtl go ahead and buy these guys take them over to the breeder and here is where you would activate your shiny charm and or donator status at the same time while you're making the eggs. So what you're going to do is if you're breeding for a shiny off of shiny charm is just do it's, it's a lot of text and it's a lot of going through stuff like this, but you want to go through click. No, you want to do this over and over and over again. You want to go through these text text things over and over and over again, get all of these eggs and then just throw these eggs. We'll do the same for this pair as well. Basically you want to just throw these eggs into your poker boxes and don't hatch them yet. You do not want to hatch the eggs yet. Because shiny, whether it's shiny or not, is determined on the egg creation. And what that means is you don't need to hatch the egg yet. If it's shiny, you'll already have gotten your 10% or 20% chance boost for it to be shiny if you have donator status and charm. And you'll just hatch these later. So what you'll do is you'll make all of the eggs while on charm and donator status and then hatch them after e either one of those wears off or both of those wears off. So that's a really good way to egg hunt for shinies while using charm and donator status to the maximum potential. Now breeding for a shiny is something that not many people should undertake. It's something that is extremely time consuming and extremely excruciatingly expensive. So for example, I just pulled up my calculator. Um, it costs, let's say, so let's say it costs 3000 per ditto, 200 Poke Yen for the Poke Ball. You have to factor that in for each hatch. And then 2,000 um, extra Pokemon for the Shuckle. And then you will, you will like, lose some of the costs because you'll be able to, like, rebreed the babies that, that you'll get from the eggs. But not including deducting that cost, it, at the 1 out of 30,000 shiny rate, it would cost 156 million Pokemon to breed a shiny Shuckle. Um, you could probably bring that down to, I want to guess, I think you just have it. Because you would get some of the readers back. So I think it would end up costing, what is that, divided by two, around 78 million Poke Yen to breed a Shiny Shuckle. So it's definitely something that is only pursued by people who really want that Shiny or by a very rich, specific type of person. Breeding for Shinies is not super common and is only done by the elite of elite players.
Okay, I do believe that is everything. Shiny hunting is pretty simple in Pokemon Mo, and it really does just come down to dedication, determination, and the power of grind, you know? The shiny rate in Pokemon Mo is 1 out of 30,000, which is much larger than any game, so it's understandable that shiny hunting in this game is a special beast of its own, and I wish you guys the best of luck, and, you know, good luck on your shinies, have fun, keep the grind fresh, etc., etc., but please leave any comments, yell at me in the in description, you know, whatever. If I got anything wrong, if I missed anything, if I didn't cover anything well enough or properly, please let me know. Please scream at me as much as you like, as long as you're being kind of sweet about it, you know. Um, anyways, have a great day. Good luck shiny hunting, and peace.